Hi, and welcome to the Link YouTube channel dedicated to answering any question or challenge you have related to electrical and life safety. And we're going to use NFPA Link to do it. Easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards. So today we've been asked to cover the important points of required equipment on apparatus. So let's get started. So you see here I have my cursor on NFPA 1901 standard for automotive fire apparatus. This is the 2016 edition. And you recall when you were specking apparatus, uh, you looked at 1901 and in some of the different chapters, in this case chapter 5 covered pump or fire apparatus, the different chapters covered the different types of apparatus. Chapter 8 was aerial, chapter 9, uh, Quint and so forth. So let's say that you are looking at pumper, looking for a pumper. And on the left hand side here at 5.8, you can see there is the equipment to be supplied by the contractor. You'll see here, contractor shall supply the equipment listed in 5.81, 5.82, and shall provide and install such brackets or compartments um, as necessary. So. Under that was the requirements for ground ladders to be delivered with the new apparatus, uh, the suction hose. Scrolling down a little further at 5.9, we'll talk about minor equipment. The equipment listed in 5.93 and 5.94 shall be available on the pumper apparatus before it is placed in service. So this is the equipment that needed to be on the apparatus, perhaps you know to get full credit for uh, some of your insurance um, schedule purposes you'll uh, you'll look you're looking at putting this stuff on on your apparatus and at 5.94 miscellaneous equipment the following additional equipment shall be carried on the apparatus here's the list from axes uh, to hand lights spanner wrenches all the things that were required uh, to be on that apparatus uh, to be placed in service um, and each chapter actually had a similar list so in this case, chapter eight, um, chapter eight, the equipment supplied was in 8.8, .8, and then minor equipment, and then the list of, of the uh, equipment required, it, this, the special equipment, extra equipment that's supposed to be uh, on the apparatus. So when um, it was time to revise or update 1901, 1901 went through a consolidation process and uh, one of the things that occurred was that it was consolidated into a new document. So let's go to that. And that new document is 1900. NFPA 1900 consolidates NFPA 414, uh, 1901, 1906, and 1917. This is a 2024 edition. And you'll see as it's listed here, one of the changes was that uh, under now under Chapter 8, Fire Apparatus, requirements by type. And you'll see there that there's a list in the left-hand column. You'll see that there are different requirements for different types of apparatus, all listed within the same chapter. And then so now we're going to look at equipment. And under 8.4, 8.4 with the asterisks uh, gives you a detailed list of who is to furnish the equipment to be carried on the apparatus and the method for organizing and mounting these items shall be supplied by the purchasing authority. So herein lies the change from going from the 2016 edition of 1901 to the 2024 edition of 1900 the technical committee felt that because there were so many differences from department to department and what they wanted to, uh, to be carried on their apparatus, that they felt that it was more efficient to allow the AHJ, the authority having jurisdiction, made, make up that decision. On top of that, um, they didn't want to get rid of the list. So they re put the uh, list into the annex and this is it, uh, Annex A.8.4, open that up in book view. And they created a table, a couple of tables in fact. I'm going to expand that. 
And you'll see that now on this table, it's listed out by pumper, initial attack, mobile, water supply, aerial quint across the top. You can pin those. And then on the left-hand column, all the different types of equipment, and then what is suggested or to be considered to be on that apparatus. Right? So for instance, under a pumper, uh, it should be considered to carry uh, two salvage covers or tarps, um, nothing for rope in this case. But that's again, that's a, a suggestion for aerial. There are the requirements or there are the suggestions there. And so back and out of this, another table was created. Expand that. And that was for equipment that should be considered on wildland fire apparatus. And lastly, the last table. The table covers additional equipment that might be considered on a structural fire apparatus. And here is the list for pumper. On the demolition tools, EMS, extrication, fans, and so forth. So that's where that list moved to. It's more of a, a suggestion now. It's up to the HJ to determine what is uh, to be on the apparatus. I hope this was helpful and it answered some of your questions about required equipment and where that list went to. Um, be sure to visit nfpa.org backslash link and give link a try if you haven't already. Thank you.